All right, Andrew, are you ready to do this? You ready to talk thunder? I'm ready. I do it. I do it a lot. I'm ready to do it. I'm ready to talk uh, with you specifically, Sam, about the Thunder. So the thing I want to start with is, look, I love Down to Dunk. I can't say that I listen to it every episode. I do listen, but not. There's a lot of episodes. You know, That's okay. Certainly not every episode. A thing that I want to talk to you about to start is just the way that this team has been constructed as much as yeah. anything. It feels like to me from the outside and, you know, get trying to gather as much as I can understanding what their process is. It feels like they have figured out the way to go about building a roster with elite positional size. Mm -hmm. The Raptors tried to do this with their project six, nine or whatever, Everyone can handle the ball. Everybody can get up tempo. Everyone's athletic, et cetera, et cetera. Where I think the Raptors just slightly missed was the skill part of it. And yeah. I feel like the Thunder are doing something very similar, drafting guys with elite positional size. Look at last year's draft. Chet Holmgren, Jalen Williams, six foot six with a seven foot two wingspan, looks more like a four out there a lot mm -hmm. of the time in terms of his size. Uh, and Usman Jang, six foot 10, starting to come on in a way, uh, you know, yeah. certainly just a bench player who is emerging and is very young. It does. I, I will say this. He looks way better than what I thought he would this season at any yeah. point. I thought he was a yeah. pure developmental player. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, Jalen Williams is a versatile. Jay will is a versatile defensive chess piece that you can do a lot with. Yep. Doesn't have like elite positional size, but is switchable. The thing that on top of that, that they have figured out is the skill piece all of the guys that they drafted are very skilled for their position. Chet, yeah. Jalen Williams, uh, Usman Jang, six foot ten French point guard, basically, uh, mm -hmm. when he was developing. Jalen Williams, uh, J. Will, essentially a floor spacing five man that is tough and physical, but also really uh, can pass and make plays and things. Yeah. But the biggest thing to me is that they draft guys with a fast brain. Mm -hmm. They draft guys that process the game exceptionally well, think the game at an extremely high level. And because of that, and this goes back to the last draft as well, Josh Giddy, Jeremiah Robinson Earl, because of that, these guys are able to play sooner rather than later. And yep. they're able to make an impact within Mark Dagnalt's uh, defensive structure early, as well as, be able to play five out offense, which is what they really want to do there, uh, long term and short term. Tell me what you think of all of this, because it's kind of something I've had brewing in my brain for a while, and I really love what they've done. Yeah, I think you you nailed it. One, they got really lucky that a, a team that wanted Paul George had a guy named Shea Gildas Alexander who fits all of that to a T. Incredibly intelligent player, crazy long arms, six foot six point guard. I mean, Monty Williams said the other night that he looks like a four man a lot of times yeah. out there with his size. And so you start your team with that. And then it was interesting because in their first draft, when they had the chance to draft Josh Giddy, a lot of people were thinking, okay, the first draft of the rebuild. What do we know about Sam Presti? He got he likes really athletic guys that don't do a whole lot. You know, they're just crazy athletic and they try to make them into basketball players. That was kind of what they tried to do the first time around. And so they're like, okay, Jonathan Kaminga. Let's put Kaminga yeah. on the Thunder. You know, let's put Keon Johnson on the Thunder. And then it's like, nope, it's gonna be a little different this time. They took Josh Giddy, six foot eight point guard. Just a crazy rebounder, crazy competitor. I think that's another thing yeah. is like personality is such a huge deal to this yep. team. And if you ever get a chance to be near or around this group, you see it pretty quickly that this yeah. is you have to have a pretty high level of character to yeah. be on this team. And if there's questions about your character, sorry, you're not a Thunder player. You won't yep. you will not be on this team. And so it, the first thing, the first question you have to ask yourself is, can this guy be a Thunder player is, can they make a decision with the basketball? If the answer yeah. is no, they won't play for the Thunder. They just won't. 
And there may be some exceptions to that, maybe with like a free agent or somebody that is brought in like on the fringes of the roster where they're just like trying to figure figure out who they are, maybe a second round pick or something like that. But if they're drafting in the lottery, they're going to draft a guy that can make a decision with the basketball, yep. like guaranteed. And that's why like Chet was the perfect fit out of the guys that were taken at the top of the draft. That's why Jalen Williams was. I mean, Jalen Williams, a lot of people know his story. He was a point guard and then had a growth spurt right before he went to Santa Clara for his first year and just kind of showed up on campus like six foot five, like, wait a minute, you were supposed (laughs) to be six foot one. You know what happened here? And he just became a guy that could play multiple positions. And he had never played the four. And he played he played the four for the first time with the Thunder in summer league. And I got to talk to him after the game and he's he said, Yeah, I've never done that before. And not as only not only has he done that and like consistently starts at that position for the Thunder, they play him a small ball five. Yeah. And you know, they that's what they want. They want this to be as positionless as possible. And size makes it possible, certainly. Like the the yeah. fact that all these guys are six six and taller, crazy long arms, uh giddy six eight. But it's also just the skill overlap. A lot of people think skill overlap can be not the greatest thing all the time. But when the skill overlap is being able to handle the ball and being able to make a decision with it, uh, it's actually pretty great because that actually does make (laughs) it positionless. Because if everybody can initiate offense, if everybody can get downhill, which is very much a thunder thing, then you're set. And you don't have to worry about getting into the offense late. That's one of the things that Mark just hates is when they don't get into the offense immediately. Like they want to yep. use they want to be able to use every second of that shot clock and how you do that is you push the ball up the court as fast as possible with whoever's nearest to the ball. And that's what they do. Is they try to get into their sets as fast as possible so that if the first one doesn't work, spray it out, try it again. And they're they're extremely fun and you know, I I think they're going to continue to try to add players like this. Uh, some people think like, oh man, there's they can have too many decision makers out there. I just don't know that the thought process, you know, of the team indicates that. Like, I just don't, I don't really see that. I think that they're going to continue to add to the team in that way. Um, so yeah, but I think you've nailed this. Size for position is big. Making a decision is big, um, yep. and then character is also like definitely a thing. Yeah. So the you brought up the idea of them being like athletes, you know, in the previous generation, you know, your Andre Robertson's, your Perry Jones's, your, mm-hmm. uh, you know, this, that, and the other. Right. Mm-hmm. It felt like to me, those were, and look, the Detroit Pistons track record at this point kind of says that those guys seem to be more Troy Weaver types. There's, right. Those were, yeah, totally. And now that, Sam, you know, once Troy Weaver got that job in Detroit, it felt like Presti decided to do a different thing. Not to say that one of them is right and one of them is wrong. I prefer Mm -hmm. the Oklahoma City model personally. Uh, Mm -hmm. It felt like Presti decided to go down a different road. And I find that fascinating in a number of different directions, just because, A, it feels like we don't get many general managers who get a chance to, like, evolve. They get fired before they evolve. Right. If something Mm -hmm. goes wrong and like they go from contender to non-contender, the process ends and maybe they go get a new job like Daryl Morey did where he left Houston to go to Philly or Mm -hmm. maybe they get fired. It feels like we rarely get general managers who get to evolve and change over the course of their careers with one organization. Yeah. Presti has really done that. Like, and look, you're never like, I feel like Sam Presti, like is never going to lose a trade just straight up. Like he's yeah. great. He understands what he's looking for in those regards. And now he, I think more than any other general manager understood where the league was going quicker than anybody else. Mm-hmm. And because of that, they now have a leg up on everybody. You talk to te- like, look, I talk to teams all the time as someone who does draft stuff like this is this is what i do every single team is looking for guys you know positional size positional skill positional length all that stuff 
Some teams yeah. value feel more than others. Some teams value character more than others. But everyone wants positional size, positional skill. That's it. Mm-hmm. Oklahoma City figured that out quicker than everybody. And because they figured it out quicker than everybody, they were able to get their pick of the guys with high character, with you know the other attributes that they look for. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a credit to Sam Presti. That's why this team has evolved as quickly as it has uh, from – essentially being tanking, you know, not, not quite tanking, but they, th- yeah. their tanking process was way shorter than what everybody thinks. Like yeah, those two seasons. Yeah. Yeah. Like we're on three seasons with Houston right now mm-hmm. and four San with Antonio, Detroit. Yeah. Four with Detroit. San Antonio is going to be multiple seasons here moving yeah. forward, unless they get one. Yeah. Like right. the way that they were able to turn this as quickly as they were is very real. Mm -hmm. And because of that, this team is now extremely well positioned moving forward, especially with all the assets they have now. I mean, they have a million assets moving forward to be able to continue to build and maybe use some of those assets now that teams have figured out what this model is in order to get higher up the draft board and continue to accumulate these players that you tend to have to draft because they are very valuable as opposed to getting them in free agency. Yeah, I mean the Thunder won't won't be able to use free agency uh, just because they're located in Oklahoma City and players don't want to come play here. And that's just yeah, you know, that's just the nature of this. Um, but that's okay. They've got enough draft picks. They'll be able to find the guys they want. I mean, in this next draft, they only have one pick. They only have their own pick. But next year, they potentially have four, <laughs> and they could use you know a couple yeah. of those picks. Let's say they really like a particular player in like the six or seven range and they could use a few draft picks to go get who they want. You know, that's kind of the beauty of that for them. Um, And who knows? I mean, they had that pick at 12. You know, Jalen Williams was there and he was a guy that was projected to go even lower than that. And so, so, yeah, I've done research on this. I think I was the highest out of people in the public sphere they yeah. do this, you know, professionally, not just, you know, as like a side job. Uh, yeah. I think I was the highest and I had him at 18. Yeah. Yeah. It was, a, it was a surprise and, you know, Sam Presti will never show anybody his, his draft big board, but I would <laughs> guess it, it looked pretty different because he was definitely yeah. the guy that they had circled. It was Chet. I mean, Chet without a doubt was like the thunder yes. guy. Like, and then, yes. and then it was, and then it was Jalen Williams, and they've proven to be right about that. I mean, his his trajectory looks pretty ridiculous right now. So yeah, let's talk about Jalen. Let's transition to J Dub. We have a question here from Kenny in the YouTube comments. JJ Reddick, shout out JJ, said J Dub has superstar potential. What are your thoughts on that, Andrew Schlecht? Uh, it's he definitely has that potential without a doubt. You can see how he can get there because he's a big wing that can handle the ball. He can shoot. He can pass. He gets to the hoop. He's, he's 70% in the restricted area this year, which is just absurd. And he's crazy efficient and he's efficient, whether he's taken five shots or 15 shots in a game. And he's worked really hard to get to this level. And I think he's going to continue to work. And so he has like all the makings of what a star wing looks like, you know, as a young player and the efficiency stuff is honestly like it's out of this world. There just aren't many (laughs) players that like the the last player that was listed as a guard that was this efficient around the rim and from the field in general was Ben Simmons and Ben only took shots at the rim and like took those like little floaters. Like that's all he did. Well, Jada takes, every kind of shot he takes threes he takes mid-range jumpers he takes pull-ups he takes floaters he takes these like cross like he crosses the the lane taking like going the opposite way with the opposite hand like shooting the floater. i mean he just does everything like high degree of difficulty shots and he's still just crazy efficient um it would be a little surprising if he wasn't at least like a fringe all-star, if not an all-star type of player down the road, just because this is, this is what these guys look like. I agree. I, I would be surprised at this point if he is not a star, that, that's yeah. kind of where I'm at on him. Like you watch the way that he processes 
drives even, right? Like, let alone like just process the game, gets the ball out quickly, rotates well defensively, everything. Like his reactivity is lightning quick, yep. driving to the rim in terms of the way that help defenders come at him and he's reading help defenders, figuring out which which and where to go. You know what I mean? And like mm-hmm. how to contort his body, how to use his length to its yep. best uh, potential. What I wrote in the rookie rankings was I think he has this really cool blend of like modern basketball mindset, processing, constant cross corner kickouts, you know, uh, creative finishes around the basket, you know, trying to put pressure on the rim, willingness to shoot threes, et cetera, et cetera. But mixes it with this like old school, like footwork based game with like reverse pivots and like these weird, like he'll throw up like running hook shots, like at the basket that go in because he has great touch and he has length to high point the ball above rim protectors at a really high level. He is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. He he is a genuinely ridiculous player. I am like fully on, like in a redraft of, I have to do a redraft of the 2022 draft in April Mm -hmm. at some point. Mm -hmm. He is like unequivocally a top five pick. I don't even think it's close. Like it's totally, you can make a case for him at two. I think like, yeah. Yeah. Look, like I love Chet probably would still take Chet over him long-term, which says a lot about where the Thunder are, I think, because I think Chet is just an absolute stud. But, you know, I I don't know, knowing the certainty of what we know about J-Dub now, how this translates to the NBA, I I really would have to consider it. Like, I really will have to strongly think about that Mm -hmm. when I'm, you know, going through that process because we know that he can be like a 25-5 and guy over the course of X number of games, Right. So, yeah. yeah, it's it's real. It's I think that if he closes the season like this and Paulo continues to be a bit inefficient, I think the rookie of the year race is like semi open still. Mm-hmm. It's probably Paulo, but yeah, you never know, right? Like if yeah. Oklahoma City makes the play in, or God forbid the playoffs, like they end up in six seed, which would be bonkers. Yeah, I mean, not impossible. Yeah. This next this next seven games are are pretty big for them if they can. Yeah. Some go like four and three in this next seven, which is possible. Like they're, yeah, they could get there. And, and some of that is also the teams around them are just falling apart. But yeah, um, you know, J Dub will be a big part of what they're doing. And I, we we did a redraft on Down to Dunk last week, and he ended up going third. I just yeah. stuck with Chet at two, just because I know how in love the Thunder are with him. Yeah, um, and he's such a weird player and he, he actually warmed up in front <laughs> of the home crowd for the first time for like 20 plus minutes. And it was uh, something to behold. I mean, the dude's jumper looks ridiculous. He, yeah. he's got pull-ups, he's got threes. I mean, I'm, I'm very, very intrigued to see what he looks like um, with, he is... with this particular team. It's going to be ridiculous. He is sick. He is absolutely sick. Uh, okay, L- let's talk about Shea real quick now. Um, yeah. Shea Gilgis Alexander. I would have him in the top 10 for MVP. I venture something like oh, second team all NBA. Luca would definitely be first team all NBA in a guard spot. Yeah. I think my immediate reaction would be to have Donovan Mitchell ahead of him just because they're like mm-hmm. 10 games ahead of Oklahoma City. And I think that sure. you know, Donovan's numbers are just going to be worse because he's playing next to Darius Garland. And mm-hmm. like Darius gets usage, Evan Mobley gets usage, et cetera. Uh, I, I just – something like second team All-NBA sounds right to me for Shea. And I think that's an em- enormous emergence into being a real star. Yeah. I mean, 31 points per game is ridiculous in itself. He, the way that he can get to the hoop and finish just over and over again. I mean, he had 40 the other night, zero three pointers taken, zero. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he can get whatever he wants whenever he wants. The pull up mid range is filthy. He's 
I mean, he's still shooting 51% from the field. I mean, the when you plug his numbers in to Stathead, like the only consistent yeah. name that pops up is Michael Jordan. Yeah. And it's it's absurd what he's doing. The and the there's two things that have changed the most for him since last season. One, it's free throws. Ten free mm-hmm. throws a game at ninety percent from the line. Like he's just automatic. And then the second thing is defense. Like he yes. cares about defense this year. He is an absolute two way player. Who was guarding Devin Booker down the stretch of that Suns game? It was Shea. Yeah. Who was being who and he was extremely effective because he's got long arms, he cares, and he watches a ton of tape. Like you can tell there there was a game really, really early on in the Thunder season where they were playing Orlando, and Franz Wagner was basically their guy down the stretch. And he knew exactly which shoulder Franz was gonna turn over and stopped him before he could even get to it. And I was yeah. like, Oh, okay, yeah. this is a this is a different season for Shea. And it's been that way since then. Like he wants to take on tough assignments. I asked him about it after the game against Phoenix, just about his thoughts on like, obviously you chose to match up with, with book and you know what, like, tell me, you know, what's your motivation? he said, well, he's like, I need to know where I stack up. Like, I want to be, the, <laughs> I want to be the best player and I need to know where I stack up against the best guys on both ends. Like, can yeah. I, like obviously he can dice up Devin Booker, but can he stop Devin Booker? You know, that's, yeah. that's what he wanted to know. And on top of that, he's, he's honestly kind of a dream superstar for this franchise because he's willing to do just anything and everything. I mean, the dude sets screens. I mean, he was the screener and the roller yeah. a couple times in that game against Phoenix. Yeah. And that just doesn't happen. <laughs> with guys it's like him it's you know insane. i mean he he's he's selfless he's he can score whenever he wants he cares about defense uh he's definitely an all nba type of player he he made yeah. a tremendous leap from last year to this year and he's only taken two and a half threes a game which is yeah. crazy that is not if i were to project how he was to get here i would i would not have said hey take less threes Shay, and then like you'll yeah you'll get to no, where you right. want to go yeah um but he's done that he's been unbelievable this year and i a, a lot of me has kind of wanted the thunder to dip into the lottery one more time to get somebody but the emergence of jalen williams makes that yeah. something like you don't really you don't need it you know i think if jalen williams let's say they didn't get him and they just had usman jang and chet i think you'd be in a spot where you'd be like okay like is Giddy really get good back. enough to be yeah. there? Like Giddy is Giddy is really good and has had a very well, underrated season. Yeah, that, that's who I wanted to talk about next was Josh. So yeah, yeah, get, but yeah, you, job. yeah, but you still, but I don't think they need to get there. I want to see what Shea can do in a play in, in like in the play in, or if they can get to the six seed, or if they can win a play in game or two. Like I would like to see. I guess they'd only need to win. No, they they need to win two if they're in the lower seed. But I'd like to see them. Um, in like games that really matter. Yeah. And I'd like to see Mark coach in games that really matter. I will say on Josh too. So Josh hasn't played in the playoffs, even back to the NBL. Right. Yeah. But Josh's like late game stuff when he was playing like U18, like equivalent here mm-hmm. was like pretty real. Apparently haven't talked to people around like Australian basketball. Like he might be a dude that like really just emerges in the playoffs is like a real thing because he has that competitive drive that whatever that is, you know what I yeah. mean? Uh, yeah. yeah. I think Josh has been great this year. I think he's really taken the steps that you would hope that he would take point blank. Yeah. Right. Like he's averaging 16, eight and six. His processing ability is just second to none. At the end of the day, it's going to come down to shooting for him because he's not going to mm-hmm. always be on the ball. He needs to be a 36% three point shooter. I think he'll get there. Mm -hmm. I do. Like he's made real strides as a shooter this year and he's a worker. Like he is a really like, not like a psycho psycho worker, but like a guy who really wants to get in the gym and like really wants to improve every single time out. He's gotten huge this year. Like he is enormous. Uh, Not just like tall, but like his body has just like filled out in a really substantial way. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. And he's only 20. That's the thing. That's kind of crazy. That's scary. 
that he's already bulked up and you're like, oh, okay, cool. Like, oh, wait, he's 20. He's 20. Like, what does Josh Giddy look like at 25? I think you know? he's going to be an all star, Andrew. I think yeah. he's going to be an all star. <laughs> That's, like... <laughs> a, that's the thing. I, th- I think that people, I think people underrate him in Oklahoma City. One because Shea's so good, and then two because J Dub is taking yeah. such a huge step. But honestly, if you were to sit down before the season and say, "Okay, what does Josh Giddy have to do to make you think that he's an improved player?" Well, he's got to shoot it better. Well, he went from forty six percent effective field goal to fifty one. Yeah, like he's improved significantly as a shooter. He was twenty six percent from three last year, thirty two percent this year. Is it guaranteed to get a whole lot better than that? Not guaranteed, but that's at least like, okay, you can take threes. If he's 26% still this year, you're like, oh boy. Okay. Like, let's, we got to go back to the drawing board on this guy. No, he's like, he's figured it out. And he's hit, and he's had spots in the season where he's hit like over 40% for like 20 games in a row. And then he'll slump. And then, I mean, he's just a classic like guy that's trying to figure out his shot, but 16 points per game. From 12 last year, I mean, I just honestly don't know what else you could ask for from Josh. And he's willing to yep. take on a lesser role at times and willing to be a guy down the stretch. I mean, there was there's a game in Boston down the stretch where he basically was like just your designated rebounder. Yeah, like I'm going to totally. I'm going to rebound and I'm going to get the hit ahead pass. And it's the ball's yeah. gone out of bounds. Great. I can pass the ball in from out of bounds better than probably anybody else in the NBA, not named LeBron James. Um, it's unbelievable. That he, he is a special player and he's also the second youngest guy in their rotation. The only guy that's younger is Usman Jang. And yeah. I think people forget about that too, when they're kind of projecting, cause it's like, Oh, we got, you know, Shay and we've got J dub and, you know, Chet. And it's like, wait, wait a minute. Like this, you have this six foot eight, like positionless point guard, whatever he is, yeah. who's ultra competitive, fiery. He was so mad at himself in the game the other day. He threw a he threw a really bad pass, and he's just like smacking himself in the head over and over again, like just because he's like he just wants to win so badly and wanted to win that yeah. Phoenix game so badly uh, that he just he has just a characteristic about him. Just like that kind of fire about him. They're like, okay, I've seen it on the court enough times. Where like, I believe in this dude. Like, I just believe yeah. he's going to figure it out. 